how animals' senses reveal the hidden realms around us. You identify, what, 13 of them, including mm-hmm. uh, heat, pain, contact, flow, vibration. Um, we talked about echoes uh, for a moment. Electric fields, magnetic mm-hmm. fields. Um, they can sense the magnetic field of the Earth, and they use that... Um, Do we understand the biological mechanisms in the animal that allows this to happen? We very much do not. Um, yeah. in, uh, this is, this is a s- magnetoreception um, is a sense that not only has the problems we've already described, but has the much bigger problem that we don't even really know how it works. And, and listen to this. So that is a recording of the mating songs of leaf hop. Tell us a little bit about what we're we're hearing. Well, we're hearing the the sounds of these little insects that that spend their lives on plants. They feed on plant sap, and they're very small. They're not very good at producing sounds that would radiate in the air. But plants are really um, exquisite structures for transmitting vibrations. Anything that really touches the plant um, will, will create a vibration, that, a, a wave that spreads through the plant. And so they have evolved ways to introduce or to inject vibrations into those plants. And then the vibrations just naturally and very quickly travel throughout part or, or most of the plant. And then the other insects have these arrays of exquisite vibration detectors in their legs that they use to pick them up. Well, this whole group of insects in, in German are, are called small cicadas. And essentially their, their body looks like exactly like a miniature cicada. But the interesting thing about tree hoppers is that part of their, their the structure on their back has become very exaggerated for reasons nobody really understands, but it forms kind of strange shapes um, that sometimes look like uh, the Starship Enterprise uh, coming out of their back. Huh. I'm Meghna Chakrabarty. This is On Point. So let's listen to another little uh, example of sound, Professor Kocroft, that you so kindly gave to us. Um, mainly, this 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 is de- a demonstration of how there are sound in places where we as humans think um, are usually totally silent. No, that was what was that? So that is the soundscape of a single blade of grass that pick up sounds and turn them into vibration. Okay, so Professor Cocroft, stand by for just a second, because, Ed, let me turn back to you. The point that the professor just made is one that you underscore again and again in your book, that we are part of these creatures' worlds, even as we don't sense how uh, the, the impact of us being part of them are. Can you tell me more about why that's important? Yeah, because I think um, we um, insinuate our um, uh, our sensory world onto theirs by filling the world with light, with sound, with vibration, um, and sometimes in quite detrimental ways. Um, light and noise pollution have been large problems for the animals around us. They've distracted them from the cues that they need um, to to uh, find mates and to communicate. They um, push them away from habitats that would otherwise be great for them, but are are now too bright or too noisy. They might lure them into sensory traps, like turning turtles away from the water or pulling moths literally into flames. Mm. 